Welcome back to One Hand Two Ducks. Yes, a, the- a grown-up theater kids podcast. Today, we are talking about movie musicals and movies made into musicals. To musicals. Mm-hmm. And when is enough enough? When is it enough, people? When is it enough? <sighs> when is it enough? Let me explain. <laughs> uh, for the past couple, oh, decades... Broadway has been very into taking movies of yesteryear and turning them into musicals, which is fine and it's very entertaining. And most of the time, you know, we have a great time at the theater. It's great. And sometimes you get those specific ones that are actually very moving and very lovely and kind of go a different direction than the actual movie, but still honor the movie and and create something new at the same time. Um, but then sometimes it, it, it goes slightly awry. And then all of a sudden mm-hmm. you realize the entire Broadway season is nothing but movie musicals. And you just kind of... And to be fair, it, it's the same on the opposite end of... Mo- like, movies have been taking musicals for decades as well. You know, we've got Oliver, we've got Sound of Music, we've got My Fair Lady... We got all those yesteryears that were Broadway musicals first, and a lot of them didn't even use the original cast, like mm-hmm. My Fair Lady. Um, that was Julie Andrews, and they were like, "Who's Julie Andrews? A nobody." They're like she's we're casting not famous Audrey. enough. And then she goes and wins an Oscar with Mary Poppins. So, who then turned into a stage musical after being a movie musical? <laughs> it's a weird circle. It's like this constant. <laughs> Circle. Oh my gosh. I kind of, I went back to just kind of look because I was curious to see if there was like maybe more of an uptick in the past 10 years. And it just seems like it's been kind of a consistent flow of like movies or uh, musicals that were movies that were turned into musicals for Broadway. It's been very consistent over the past. It's been very consistent and 20 years. It's, it's very frustrating because this is not, I think this is just an entertainment problem. This is definitely a theater problem. And I think this is all, you can even cross into movies as we are today. Like not only just like musicals, but adapting everything. They, it's like, there's no original writers. They're adapting yes. books. They're adapting, you know, everything. And I'm like, where are the rock? Cause it, back in the, if you look at classic movies, most of those are original baby. Yeah. Most of those were thought right here in the imagination of the writer. And then all of a sudden we got, I don't know if it's laziness or if it's the business, but one of the two. It's sequels too. Like, yes. Oh, the sequels it's an obsession with sequels. <laughs> Just end it. Just end it and move on. Please, for the love of goodness, God, Jesus, everybody, move on. Like it's, it's getting out of control. And I, and, and I get it. Uh, the business, I think, has put a lot of pressure on writers because they're all about time is money. Yeah. Time is money, time is money, time is money. We need we need the, the scripts now. We need it now. But the thing about writing is it takes time. It takes a lot of time. Most of those phenomenal novels that they are adapting took decades to write. You know, and then we talk about, of course, Lin-Manuel Miranda in our Hamilton off book. Six years. We talk about um, so many... There, there, There's years. Oh, and then even... Actually, me and Megan were talking about this during our meeting once. And we talked about even Pixar. Pixar, 10 years per film. 10 people, 10. It takes time to write. And instead of accepting that, I think the business is just like, well, we don't care. We just want to make money. It's like they, I mean, obviously, I get it. I get it. We're in the business of entertainment. You know, entertainment is, is key. Especially like when you look back at the history of New York City and how back in like the 70s and 80s, 42nd Street and Times Square was kind of this like seedy place and a place that you did not want to be. And then all of a sudden here comes the 90s and Disney decided to make their uh, musical The Lion King into a Broadway show. But in order to do that, they needed a big theater And the only way to do it was going to be on 42nd Street, but they couldn't have their audience that was going to come see like a children's musical walk past a bunch of like 
porn theaters and drug addicts and stuff like that. So they really had a hand in kind of cleaning up 42nd Street and cleaning up Times Square. So then once you start kind of doing that and you start getting more of that touristic feel like bringing in the masses of tourism, then you start thinking everybody else, then everybody else has to up their game. And they're like, okay, well, what are we going to do that's going to compete with Lion King? Nothing. Beauty and the Beast. But, <laughs> well, but like, if you're not Disney, what are you going to do yes. that's going to compete? Yeah, if you're not Disney. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's like find something that everybody knows. Let's pick a movie that everybody knows and we'll adapt it and make it a musical. And that way that at least... Like, you know, anybody, wherever you're from, you you know what Pretty Woman is. Oh, it's going to be Pretty Woman, the musical. You know what I mean? So it just becomes something of more of like recognition. And and I know you have thoughts on this, Selena, but like the, the whole power of nostalgia that mm-hmm. it seems to be really seeping into everything we do. Like we see something like Stranger Things or this or that. Like it's really starting to try to... Uh, come to our age group and say like, hey guys, 80s nostalgia, remember these movies growing up? Remember this growing up? Didn't you love Mrs. Doubtfire? Don't you want to see a Mrs. Doubtfire musical? You know, so it's just preying on us. And I get it, I know, it's commercial, and, but ah. Uh. Right, I was actually reading an article about that, about the whole nostalgia thing that's happening. And I was wondering, okay, why are they targeting, uh, what did we do? Especially, specifically millennials. Did, like, why are they targeting us? What did we us? ever do? What did we ever do to you? But I, um, but this article is actually very good about explaining how um, we're the first generation that grew up with TV, that grew, not only TV, that grew up specifically with our own channel. Because mm. before that, there was no kids' channels. It was just whatever was on was on. Um, and then our generation was the one that grew up with, okay, there was a specific channel for you there are specific movies for you there's specific every everything specific for you so um we have something that a lot of the like the older generations they have their nostalgia in different ways but ours is very heavily in media movies tv all of that you you for our generation you mentioned rugrats and we're like Rugrats, Rocco Modern's Life. We're like, oh my gosh! You yes, give me Rocco. a Hey Arnold any day, and I'm hey like, Hey Arnold, hey, you know, Hey Arnold. You know these things. They not only do they excite us, but they they bring us back to this this place, you know, of 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 joy, of excitement, of childhood. And you know, we are in that age range too, where we're getting the nitty gritty of life. Mm-hmm. Life has hit us in the face, like just really hard with a sack of potatoes, and we're like, man. And now here comes media going, but remember the good old days when life was... Yes, I do. Where is all that? The original cast. Where is Lori Beth Dimberg with vital information? You know, yeah, you know, like... These are the things that they they grab grab us. Um, But one thing I, I, I noticed, though, with this whole thing, is that not everything should be a musical. Not everything should be a musical. That is very I mean, true. We talked a little bit about this with our Bridgerton um, episode, <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> but not everything should be a musical. Like for example, I, I Matilda to me is a very nostalgic movie. I Matilda has a very <laughs> special heart place in my heart. Mara Wilson will always be our girl forever. forever I know she's not ever. even in acting. We're like Mara, we love you still to this day. Always, Miss always Honey for life. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, but although we love it and although it's great, I didn't necessarily feel like it needed to be a musical. I thought the sh- the story stood perfectly by itself and I, and, and, and I haven't seen, honestly, sorry, I haven't seen the musical. I haven't even heard the soundtrack, but I was just like, ugh. I was a little disappointed that they would take that. It's almost like they stole it from me. Well, and now to be the devil's advocate here, this is how you do it. And this is the way they did it. Now, keep in mind, I have, I also have not seen it. I've seen bits and pieces, but not like the full show sitting in a theater. But they went the 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 book version, the Ron Dahl version. Okay. So they like it's set in England. The kids are at like a boarding school more. Like it's it's they have accents. You know what I mean? Like it's a little <laughs> bit more on that wavelength than the kind of more Americanized version. So it does feel like the American version with Mara Wilson and um, Danny DeVito is a little bit more like this little, its own special thing. And this musical is something else out of that same uh, universe, but 
it's it, it's different because it's not so familiar. How is Mean Girls? Because Mean Girls is another one that's my staple. I watch that every October third. See, I didn't go see Mean Girls. I will tell I don't you know what I either. did. I will tell you what I went and saw. I went and saw Beetlejuice. Okay. And I was very pleasant. This is the one situation, not maybe not one, but this is one of those situations where I was extremely pleasantly surprised. Um, because when I you think about it, I did hear a song it, from Beetlejuice, and I did yes, love it. It's so good. It's so good. So here's the, here's the rub with this: is you know you kind of get we get on this topic of we want something new we want new ideas technically the music is new right you have a composer that wrote songs inspired um by this show or movie or whatever and in the in the in terms of beetlejuice so they did this with tim burton in mind but not necessarily with tim burton's stamp of approval so it's not 100%. And they go like deeper into Lydia's mom. And they go a little bit different direction with uh, her stepmom, which I can't remember her stepmom's name. It's the Catherine O'Hara part, you know. Um, and they do yeah. have, they still keep the classic moments like the day oh, right? They still keep those classic things. But then they weave in a completely different storyline. And they make it a little different by still keeping these elements that made it so important watching it and feeling kind of these elements that Tim Burton was bringing in, like you still have those kind of spooky elements and design elements, but then you have different kind of storytelling going on. Interesting. So there is some good to be had with the fact that yes, there are people working and creating new things, but I think where I am, missing something is I feel like I know that there's so many original stories that have yet to be told that because they don't have the commercial draw of a movie, they're not getting funded to do it. Yeah. And it's, but like, so when you look at something and this is something you and I will have to like figure out how to watch together somehow. Yeah. But there's a, there's a show called the band's visit. And this won the Tony Award, I believe, the year after Hamilton won. So if it's on Broadway HD, I have Broadway HD. Plug to Broadway HD. I don't know if it is. I don't think it is. I gotta check. Um, Actually, maybe it was Dear Evan Hansen and then Band's Visit. Okay. Because I think Dear Evan, it was. It's one of those. Um, But it is. It was definitely not. Not what you would consider the front runner because. Nobody has any idea what this musical is about. It's not really, it, it, obviously it's not this kind of giant blockbuster that Hamilton was. And it's not something that anybody recognizes by a name like Tootsie or mm-hmm. uh, mean, Girls. <laughs> mean Girls. Yeah, insert movie here. Um, and, and it is, it, when watching it, it's a very simple storyline. A band gets uh, sidetracked, like traveling, like an Egyptian band gets sidetracked somewhere in Israel to go perform at like a community center and they end up going to the wrong town, but then they end up at the end of the show going to the right town. But it's just about how they're in this town for the night. And it's so simple and it's just about who they meet and how like the music they play and how important it is to them. And mm-hmm. it's such an interesting, beautiful musical. And the way it's written is so poetic that it just touches you. And, and it, it's just, it, it's a brand new thing. It's a storyline we haven't seen before. Yeah. And a story, and a story about um, Middle Eastern people that we mm-hmm. also don't really have a lot See either. Much about. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And and maybe, maybe we'll see in especially 22, 23 specifically, maybe even 24, now that writers have had some time, that everything has been on a pause, we'll see what comes up. Because, because when you were saying that, I was actually thinking of some new ones, well, at least new to me, <laughs> but some new ones to me that um, are more original. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, because I might be wrong here, but um, of course, Hamilton is original. Um, six mm-hmm. is original. Yes, it's based on people, but it's original. Um, is Come From Away original? 
Uh, it is original. Yes. And that, and original. actually that's something that's coming out in a few weeks, I believe that we'll have to do a reaction video to because I yes. love Come From Away. I haven't seen it, but I heard it. And In the Heights, I'm very excited about. Oh my God. Yeah, In the Heights is great. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen that one either. Um, but, and also, is Dear Evan Hansen original? Dear Evan Hansen is original. They're all original. So, so we, yes. So maybe. They're out there. They're out there's there. There's a leaf turning. Maybe there's so. a leaf turning. Um, and, so. and that's a hope. That's that a, hope. a hope. Because, now, uh, yeah, because I, it's, it's, when we say like, when is enough enough, it's more just like, when are we going to stop throwing money at these commercial names over maybe an original idea? Right. That's all it is. Right. And I'm not saying that these like movie musicals aren't good. Some of them I haven't even seen. So <laughs> I can't yeah. be a total judge of it. I can't But I'm just really. tired of like, of, of, of. A movie coming out and then everyone being like, and now they're going to make it into a musical. And I'm like, but why? Why exactly. can't we just have like, again, a movie I'm, and enjoy sorry it? Sorry to go back to Mean Girls, but because I, I, I did hear one song from Mean Girls. It was whenever they were going into the lunchroom and they were explaining in the song where everybody sits and everything. Uh -huh. And I was just listening to this. Of course, I am also the type of person that really likes to watch the musical first because I like to understand yeah. where it's coming from. But still, this was one of those ones where I was listening first and it was just on the rate, like on my, I just told Alexa to, to play show tunes and she picked it um, <laughs> <laughs> while I was cleaning. But anyway, um, as I was listening to it, like, I don't know, again, I can't judge it, but at the same time, I was a little dis... Mm, what's I don't even know it what to, how to explain it. It didn't feel right, and then because yeah. especially when I know when it's when it's a movie I that's dear to my heart that I know so well that you know and I get it you know this is the entertainment industry and this is theater we always redo things we always you know chameleon everything you know we we you know keep doing Shakespeare even though he's been gone for a good minute um, I get it um, but <laughs> at the same time. I'm like, when it's a movie, not a play, and these characters are so iconic, their stories are so iconic, their everything, is so, and then you just try to put it into this, to me, this song that wasn't even, to me, it just was a song, just thrown out there. It was a filler, exactly, yeah. and I'm like, well, then why even do the musical if you're just going to fill things? I, you know? I will, so... I disclaimer, I did not okay. see this show. Uh Pretty Woman the Musical. Mm -hmm. But I will say there is something that in its in its marketing campaign kind of hurt my heart a little bit mm -hmm. because they were showing like shot for shot the show and the movie. Like oh, we have that moment where he closes the thing when she's reaching for it and she laughs like Julia no, Roberts laughs. that's Julia Roberts! And it was, it's kind of like you have to orchestrate these moments. You have to recreate these moments that on stage. Un... And it just, it, just, it just felt like you're totally pandering to, to people who you know, love the movie and just want to see a live version of the movie. Like, I, I, think, we all need, I think we it, all need job. We all need to make money. But that yeah. just felt icky to me. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, because, and then, and then that's just not even acting. It's, 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 uh, Im, 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 impersonating. Yeah. Impersonating. Yeah. Cause I'm like, that's how, and that's kind of rude to the actor. Like I can't take that role and make it my own. I have yeah. to do it just like Julia Roberts. And you know, and, and well, and that's the, that's the debate that we may, cross into a little bit there is um that that to me is an interesting thing and maybe it's me as an originalist because I am very much an originalist but when it comes to movies especially classics mm. there's a don't touch to it it's different I feel like it's different with movies than than plays because as we talked about Shakespeare touch it all you want to of course we don't have a you know a recorded version of the original casts thank goodness but <laughs> We would tear that apart, you know. We, we would have tore it We'd apart. be like, "What is happening?" There's no women on stage. <laughs> exactly. It would have been bad. But I don't know what it is about movies where, where, because I remember when they had this big old thing, and I think they shut it down because it's been years. 
Um, but they had this big old thing about saying they were going to redo My Fair Lady. Oh, and I was like, yeah. if you touch that, I'm going to kill you. There are some things you don't touch. You don't like, need to redo no. it. <laughs> no. It's true. And then when you bring those, when you do decide, okay, we are going to take this movie and bring it to the stage, how do you honor the movie but also make it new? Like, how do you have the... And that's why I appreciate what you said about Matilda. Yeah. How do you have that feeling of this? You get the same feels, you know, different feels, but you get the similar nostalgic feels without it being a complete copy. Yes. You can't make it a copy. If you're going to do it, you got to do it. I would say, honestly, just let the actors explore because that's going to make it different already because we're different humans. We come, we approach things differently. So if nothing else, let them just take the characters and see what comes out of it. Um, play play a lot in rehearsal and see what comes out of it. But then it's hard for the actor because even I was t- the type of person um, that whenever we got like crucible for an assignment or like things like that, where I was like, okay, or for an audition or something, I was like, I can't watch the movie or I can't watch a person doing it because automatically in my head I'll want to copy. Mm-hmm. I gotta. Uh, to, the the only way for me to honestly approach something is for me to like completely be in it blind. Um, right. That's just like maybe it's a weakness. I don't know, but I, it's it's just one of those things. So as an actor, it would be really hard for me to play. Um, I forgot her name in Pretty Woman right now. Oh, the character. Um, yeah, I don't know what her character's name is. What's her character? <laughs> See, I've, it's so I've much seen, Julie, seen, Julia I've Roberts seen, that we can't even think of her name. I've seen Pretty Woman like twice. I can't remember her name. I can't even remember. I've seen it a million times. But yes, so I could never approach that character without keeping her in my mind. You know, I'll right. try, but I think subconsciously, because I've seen it so many times, because it's a part of, you know, growing up, even though I shouldn't have been watching it when I was watching it. Um, but like, it, it's just in there. Same thing if I was playing Regina George. If I was playing Regina George, it's going to be hard for me not to do it like Ra- Rachel McAdams. It's going to be hard. I'm going to be like, get in the car, bitch. <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, sorry, it was get in the car, loser. We're get going shopping. Loser. We're going shopping. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> or, um, or, even, or even my fr- my favorite character in that show, which was Amanda Seyfield, of, of, of I, my breasts can always tell when it's raining. You know, I'm like, I don't know. It'll be so hard to not do it like her because they're all in my head. Now, golden age of Hollywood movie musicals. We had some really great ones, and we had some not so great ones. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. they were mostly like they—they're very nostalgic. They're all kind of done a very similar way with these very sweeping dance numbers, and kind literally. of literally, literally. Sometimes you have to fast forward <laughs> through them because it's just a lot. Um, and you're and you're seven. You know you got stuff to do, <laughs> but. <laughs> But nowadays, when we talk about taking movies or musicals that have been on Broadway that are, you know, their first debut is a musical on Broadway, they're not a film, and we talk about taking those to the screen, Mm -hmm. I feel like I used to get excited about it, and now, as time has gone on, I get more trepidatious. I think when Chicago happened years ago, I was like, this is how you do a movie musical, right? Yes. This is how yes. you do, that's how it's done in a correct way mm-hmm. for the modern audience. Not, mm-hmm. I mean, granted, it's also very specific. It's Bob Fosse. It's that kind yes. of feel. Yes. Every movie musical can't look like Chicago. It just can't. It can't. So how do you... How do you make, you know, like, and I see act, I see movies trying, like for example, and and I, and I, I, when I say I see movies trying, I see them trying to adapt it to the film to make sense for film. For example, Mm -hmm. um, Sweeney Todd, Sweeney Todd, they took out all the ensemble numbers because that would apparently what they were trying to do was focus on it being an internal kind of thing where it was mostly like all in the, but but at the same time, taking out all those numbers, I was like, hey. You know what? I will say what they lost in Sweeney Todd was, again, Tim Burton. He's great. And he's mm-hmm. creepy. And he could, and like, it would have been so good if he just, if he had toned down a little bit of his surrealism, brought it a little bit more into reality. 
And then also, like, didn't CGI all of London. It was a yeah. little too CGI'd. It was a little so, too can't CGI'd. Can't you just build a set? You're Tim Burton. Yeah. You can't find some yeah, money. Yeah, or go to London. Just find some money. <laughs> I get, like, you want to maybe have an entire color palette that's, like, blacks, whites, grays, kind of dingy colors Apparently he's very serious about his color pattern. Did you hear about what he did with the Nightmare Before Christmas? No. He wanted But also, only... Tim Burton, I'm here if you ever want me to give me a job. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well he apparently uh, I just saw this on a Netflix documentary but apparently he wanted he was very specific about having orange and black you know and orange and black only and then oh. like the the, co- the people who were actually making the movie because actually he was not the director FYI yeah, that's poor guy he wasn't. but anyway um, uh, the, the, the people who were actually making the movie were adding other colors and he got so mad that he kicked a hole in the wall he said no he only wanted black and orange. Listen, sometimes you and need to no stand up for what you want. Straight lines. No straight lines. And look, look, look how iconic that movie is today. If he didn't fight for what he it wanted, took a minute. we have the iconic town of Halloween Bill. We, so sometimes you gotta Halloween kick town. a hole. Sometimes you gotta kick a hole in a wall. You but um kick a hole in a wall. <laughs> But anyway, sorry, that was a little off topic. Stop but, making um, the uh, musicals. <laughs> Dang it. Stop making the Uh, yeah, so I guess, you know, it's it's more about, like you said, Megan, it's more about start investing in the actual craft. Stop investing in the big money. You know, like, just let... I think we need to... Like, similar to what we said in the BIPOC episode, I think we mm-hmm. need to just, you know, of having the certain people in the boardroom. Yes. I think we need a lot more artists in the boardroom. Agreed. Less businessmen, less marketing men, less madmen. Sorry, because I was thinking marketing men, so we went to madmen. Less of that and advertising and more artists. Because more artists. I think that artists would fight for the artistry. Artists would be like, hey, let's let's look at this Joe Smo, but look at this script. He has an amazing yeah. script. Let's give that a chance. I and know look. it's not anything now. Yeah. But... It could, it will be something if we be something. support it. Pre-pandemic in New York City, there used to be a uh, musical theater festival for new works, and they could showcase their works. They they have like uh, like a small budget. They're able to get some actors. They're able to do a very scaled down kind of production and invite producers to come see this work. Literally, I think in 2019, it might be 2018, but I think in 2019, they stopped it. They stopped this festival, and which had been going for like 10 years. And and I know that it, it dismayed so many artists because then it's like that you just made it that much harder to get yeah. those new works and those new ideas in front of people with the money. That's true. And I get it. I get it. Like, um, I had to look for scripts recently. And I get it. Writing is an art, and not many people have it. Like if you if 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 you look at a big old pool of people, like literally just tiny bits, you can get something out of. I get it. As on the business side, I get that that can be exhausting. Like mm-hmm. looking for me, it was just reading. Like, nope, that's not, nope, 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 no. And I can see that even going to it, they're taking time out of their day, and then they see a bunch of, like, bleh, and then maybe a few little nuggets. But again, I get that. But again, when I was finding a script and I did find the nuggets, they were gold. And that's what I think is missing. I think it's, 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 we got to stop looking at it as as a waste of time because of all the blah. I get yeah. it. The blah is annoying and it's frustrating. And you're like, come on, can somebody write? <laughs> you know, I get somebody it. Somebody write something can new. Somebody I want to see a get new something story. Good? Yes. And I just want to see good. something new. A good, and good new story that I haven't seen before that I can't go yes. home and like pop a tape in it, or pop a tape in. That I can't go home and. <laughs> We're millennials, okay? Leave us alone, Shana. <laughs> but I can't go home and, you know, DV up, D- Netflix. Something. Look, she can't even find the words. She was oh about to say gosh. DVD. I don't even know. It's all right. I don't even know. It's all right. 
Oh my god. We had a lot of changes in our millennial years. Okay, we went through uh, a lot of a lot of a uh, growth a lot of technology. Of so, this brings me to the fact that In the Heights is going to be a movie musical. And mm-hmm. we know nothing about it yet. Like we know nothing how it's going to go down film visually wise. This is a show I have seen and a show I love. How is it going to translate to film? I'm not sure. How are they going to take on the task of filming this and make it enough musical and enough movie? Not sure. Are you excited? Are you um I am excited. Skeptical? I wish it was I am very excited because I've never seen it because again, I don't live even anywhere near New York, so I've never seen any Broadway shows on Broadway. Um, so I am excited because I actually get to see it and I don't have to like find some bootleg copy. I actually get to see it. But at the same time, I wish that it was done more like Hamilton or and I get it COVID. I understand all that because you know Hamilton was recorded 3 days, two of those days were in front of an audience, the last day was just to get cool close-ups and everything. I get that. Um but I still wish that they could have just like picked 50 people, put them in the you know like I don't know. I just wish it was on the stage because Yes, we get a music a movie musical, but there's still something about it being on a stage. Yeah. You know, and and I'm going to miss that. I'm going to get the the and and now my oh, my first and only experience of it until I they come back if they come back, you know, um is going to be a movie. And yeah. I feel like it's a little bit of a robbing, like, oh, well, okay, this is cool, but I really wish I would have been able to see it on stage on a yeah. even if it wasn't live because i feel like at least with hamilton for me at least i feel like i even though i was i never got to see it on broadway but i feel like i did at the same time mm-hmm. because it was recorded on stage and so i was like oh yeah i know exactly and then when they when the and i could explain the sets and i can explain how the lighting changes and i can explain all that i can't i'm not going to be able to do that within the heights i'm going to be like okay and then my mind on the film side is going to go into film mode and start Doing film judgments instead of theater judgments. Sorry, I know I judge. It's, it was grained in us. I can't help it. But, um, but and, and I don't want to do that either. Now I'm going to be looking at, like, camera angles and what they did with this and why they closed up. You know, like, all that kind of stuff instead of the theater art. Yeah. That I think it was originally meant to be. And how are they going to put that in there? Like, again, how are you going gonna... actually, to... I actually think that this might do well for film so one of the criticisms that i had of in the heights when i saw it great production great music the scenes in between are a little slow it's lynn's first show if it were Mm -hmm. my first show i'm sure my scenes would be a little slow too you know what i mean but he wrote it in that very um uh like predestined pattern of like song, scene, song, scene, song, scene. And it just, it's great. But some of the scenes are just a little more like, come on, let's go to the next song. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, So I think the film might actually help with the pacing of it better. And I'm crossing my fingers for that, that that ends up being a good movie musical we put on the list of great movie musicals that translated well to film. Um, I, I have to be honest. I feel like, and I know it, this is never tech. This technically doesn't count because technically it was never a stage production, but I was very underwhelmed by the greatest showman. Really? Yes. I was with my first viewing my second viewing was a little bit better. Well, actually, no. Actually, I'm lying. Actually, I'm lying. So we saw it as a family. And we brought the kids in and everything. And so I think that, with the family kind of feel, made it cool. Because that was Angela, my my oldest daughter's like first like experience. Well, not really, because she watched other ones. But like of a modern day mm-hmm. movie musical. And so, um, and she went and, oh my gosh this is the greatest show was playing in our house like forever um, because of her. But, um, and it was cute in that way. And, and, um, and up until then, what was the one before that? Because there was a good gap. There's a good gap. After Chicago, I think, 
um, yeah, of like wasn't movie really musicals. Yeah, there wasn't any. So then this one just showed up. And there and was a I lot like before you... Chicago too. There was a big gap before yes. Chicago as well. It was like there Jesus was. Christ Superstar was the last one. <laughs> right, exactly. And and I was like you where I could see there was some weaknesses. Oh, Les Mis. That was another one. Oh, Les But anyway, Les Mis. Wait, um, that was after, so that was after, that was before Greatest Showman. That was Greatest, yeah, before after Greatest Chicago. Showman. After Chicago. Mm-hmm. After Chicago. Um, I feel like after Chicago, Chicago came out, yep. And 2004? I be- yeah, we were in high school. Because um, <laughs> I remember being obsessed. Oh, okay, so it went. And we went together, me and you. Yes. It, okay, so it went Evita, the Madonna's Evita when we were, so before Chicago, Madonna's Evita. Then years mm-hmm. went by that it was Chicago. Then mm-hmm. some more years went by, oh, and it wait. was... Oh, We're missing one. Phantom. Phantom. Phantom was before... It was like Phantom the, the next year after Chicago. Mm-hmm. And then, and then there wasn't really a whole lot because... There was nothing. Phantom wasn't that great, so no one wanted no, to invest it in anymore. Although I love Gerard, musicals. it wasn't that I know. Great. Like, they, they had some missteps, and I feel they like they could missteps. have made... Like, the visual direction was so great, and I feel like you could have done some different things but i think they stuck to their guns on some things some things and they should have just let it go and let it be yeah. um but oh well can't go and back then of course you know my feelings about les mis i thought that was okay i get it like for it. what it was for what it was it what was i love great. it i couldn't stand the les mis movie. are you serious there's a oh. lot of things that i didn't like um First what? of all, and my husband would hate me because he actually loves him, but I actually don't think that um, Hugh Jackman is a very strong singer. I think he he does his best, but I don't think he's like the best, the strongest singer for Broadway stuff. Um, and that's why I appreciated Greatest Showman because I think that one was made, because it was a more original, it was made more to tailor. It's not Broadway, so I felt like he did a far better job in Greatest Showman than he did in Les Mis because he was trying I to be think, Jean Valjean. Yeah, I think he was good in more it. modern stuff. He's got more of a modern sound. And he yes. has a great look for Valjean. But True. they should have had, like... That's the thing, though, right? When you're going to make it more commercial, you're going to show it to a broader audience. They made him a little more poppy and less that kind of classical sound that most and of the they Valjeans have. have never ever casted Russell Crowe. I get I it. I agree. You wanted money, but that part, I'm Javert, okay? Javert yeah. is my sole care. I love Javert, and I love the Broadway casting of Javert. I love his voice. Oh, his, oh, he just would get me. And Russell Crowe, I could not. He killed, yeah. he ruined it for me. And I think that was my biggest reason why I didn't like it, because I, because Javert is my favorite. I was so excited because of Javert. I was like, oh, we get to, I get to see this live. And then I'm like, what did you just do to him? You, 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 you kill, you just took his, and you just, it's, oh. the, it's the same thing with like Gerard and Phantom. Like they took two men who are yes. rock singers, who are great rock singers and put them in this kind of rock Ugh. opera, but it's more opera than rock. Ugh. And it's like, and then the, yeah, the cast, and that's why. Like, you have a bad casting choice, and then all of a sudden it makes the whole movie bad. The whole movie. You're like, well, what am I going to do Honestly, now? I'll say this. The only people I loved in Les Mis were the Broadway actors. Because even Anne Hathaway, I thought she was overacting. I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. Okay, I will say, I loved, I loved how they put her song. I loved where they put her song. Yes, I do. do I do Because they switched up the sequence of her going through kind of her life and yeah. i thought it made so much more sense than the stage version like i agree the first thing that happens to her she gets fired from her job and she sings i dreamed a dream and then she goes on to like yeah. sell her hair and her locket and her body mm-hmm. and and she she but she already sang about how <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know exactly. what i mean it's like no the worst hasn't happened to her yet have her go through yeah. all that and then be this broken and then woman yeah. and then sing that song and then it just it gave like it still gives me chills thinking about it. I'm like, that's brilliant. That's exactly yeah, what I did like that. Be. I did like that. I didn't like the uh, Tenadiers that much. And I love yeah. Helen. I love her. But I felt like they cheapened those roles because they didn't go into the depths of it. 
And those roles are actually quite, even though they are the comedic relief, those, those roles mm -hmm. are quite dark. Like, you know, like they are, like they're going through, these are people yeah. going through some stuff and trying to make the best of it. And they just made it slapstick. Yeah. And I, I hated that. I was like, hey. I actually, I feel like Helen Bonham Carter didn't go far enough. Like, yeah, that's what I mean. She I didn't feel take like it. She, she could have take brought, it. She and then brought, Sasha um, could have came down. What's her, uh, what's her character in Harry Potter? Bellatrix mm -hmm. the Strange. She mm -hmm. could have brought some Bellatrix the Strange energy of just screaming yes. into that, and she came into it very kind of like, like oh, very oh, reserved oh, 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 in her in her vocal. Of the house. Mm. Yeah, and it's like, like wasn't as. On. Don't make me. But laugh. I will it's tell like you. Like, I know we're doing a lot of lame is. I'm sorry, but um, but who I, I will tell you Whoops. that um, Andros was amazing. So he, he was my Broadway favorite actor. part. I know. That's why I said the only ones I liked were the Broadway actors. Aaron I love Marius and I loved um and I loved him because they and of course who cannot love freaking Gavrage? He was just Are adorable. you ready for this, Selena? Because guess what Aaron Tveit is in? Moulin Rouge, the musical on Broadway. It all comes full circle. <laughs> it all comes full circle. They shouldn't circle. do Moulin Rouge. They shouldn't do Moulin Rouge on the stage. No. So I have no. a friend who works at Moulin Rouge as an usher. And what they told me was this is the most spectacular show you ever see because they literally took money and was like, what else can we do? And just threw it at the show. Like anything, anything you can think of doing on a stage, they do. Mm -hmm. But they also incorporated like 30,000 more pop songs into the into the musical mm. and modern pop songs you know what i mean so you have mm. like uh you have christian meeting satine and then hanging out right the first night mm. he meets her and it's like a oh don't you dare look back just keep your eyes on me oh heck no yeah f screw i'm trying not to say things no <laughs> that's where it gets a, i mean and again i haven't seen it there's this I, like new musical. i know i know some people that are so moved by that show but i am just i i'm not feeling it already i'm not i mean i always trying to, because one of the other things that i loved about moulin rouge as a movie is they were doing a lot of cinematic things that were completely really cool and different and and those things you just can't do on stage but yeah. the other thing that I don't so there's I for um I forgot what it is, uh but I'll put it in captions right here, when I find out, um is uh there's this a Netflix musical a new one, that did that same exact thing they were taking all these modern day, pop songs, and making it and then they're just using that those songs and they're trying to create a story out of a random Netflix songs musical? yes and it's terrible I couldn't get past the t first ten minutes. I was like, what is this? This is not a musical. This is not a musical. You can't just take freaking Beyonce and then Billie Eilish and then freaking Snoop Dogg and then try to put them together and be like, it's a musical. No. No. Do you think, <laughs> that's, what, do you think that's what people thought when they would take like, like uh, songs back in the day, like the Cole Porter songs and stuff, and put them in musicals. Do you think people are like, no, these songs are on the radio. You can't put them in musicals. Maybe I am an originalist. I get it. I, I mean, maybe, but I just think there has to be a line. And 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 then for me too, it, it's it's again, it's it's it was. What's the purpose? Mm. What's the what story are you trying to tell? What's the purpose of putting all these random songs into a thing? What are you trying to get at? What do you I mean, think I don't know because I didn't finish a, the movie. What do you think makes a <laughs> movie musical work? I think it takes a... I think that it takes an original work. And that's why I honestly didn't mind Greatest Showman. Because it was original and they tried to make... I mean, yes, it would had weak points. Had quite a few weak points. Oh, I, 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 just, I do feel th that. That's going to have to be a whole other episode. because I, yeah. I, Or maybe not at all because I would tear that show apart. <laughs> Well, I tore prom apart, so it's okay. Um, but yes, sorry, I felt I'm like... sorry. I like I know people love Greatest Showman, and there are some really lovely songs and lovely moments, like the whole beginning sequence where he meets his wife and he has that whole like, da -na 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 -na. yeah, 
stunning. I was like, yes, right. great. And then from that moment after that, it was like, <laughs> was like no. Yeah. And, and I think what, what failed there is that they didn't push the movie aspect enough. See, and that's where I get it back into Moulin Rouge. Because Moulin Rouge, I think, did a good job of putting the cinematic parts of it with just making a musical, right? And then singing. And it made their world real. Because that's mm. also what I don't feel... I felt like Greatest Showman and some of the other um, movie musicals are lacking. Not Chicago. Chicago did the same thing as uh, as Moulin Rouge. But they made where... Because film is, a lot of, is more about reality than theater. Theater, right. you go in knowing you're going to be in your imagination, right? Because you mm -hmm. know... Because you can see where the, the thing ends. You see where the set ends. You see where the stage ends. You see where, you know, all... It, it's, so it takes imagination. So you already know going in that it's fake, while right. a movie, it's far more about realism. It's far more about, even if it's the most fantasy thing in the world, you make it really realistic. Even mm -hmm. if you're a hobbit, you make it to where this is its world. You believe it 110%. Yeah. Um, it's, it, there's realism there. So I think the problem is, is when they try to put that fake into the realism spots. And that's where I think um, Greatest Showman kind of failed because it didn't feel like this was their world. It felt too... Yeah. Um, like it felt like our normal world where we don't yeah. bust out in song. Yet that they were busting out in song, and you're like, okay, I'm okay. Um, I just I for yeah. me I never I never quite believed the. And and there are, I mean hello Moulin Rouge. There's ways to do modern music, but still stay in a different time period and make it work. And I just didn't believe that time period and the music. I, and a lot of the times I think it was because I felt like the songs were written and a storyline was tried, was like tried to be written around the songs. It's very true. Yeah. Cause I, I don't feel, and I feel like every song was kind of written in a way that was like going to be on the radio, you know, like let's mm -hmm. make it each one a hit and that's yeah. great. But I feel like it was almost trying too hard. And it Where wasn't it sacrifice story. Yeah. And it wasn't real emotion and it wasn't real importance. Like you have this beautiful moment where the bearded lady comes forward and she sings, this is me. And it's such a moving mm -hmm. song. And you know, when you see that rehearsal video of her singing it, it's so powerful. The rehearsal video is better than the actual part. It, it is. <laughs> and because you hear more of her story about how she was afraid to go up and sing it and be alone. And, and, and I, it you made know, me cry. You don't, yeah, you don't learn a lot about the bearded lady mm -mm. in the movie. And then, like you said, she's and then as they're having like this... all of them. And it's like, what? right. <laughs> you know, it, it And then, it, as you said, like, she's having this big moment, and, and then they go straight into a dance scene. Yeah. In this This Is Me song. And then it's just, they're now back on the stage. And it's like, there was no, like you said, there was no her. It was, I'm coming out of this room, how dare he, you know, whatever. Now I'm in a hallway dancing, and then I'm now I'm on stage dancing. Like you said, yeah. it falls flat. It was too, no... it was too, like, presentational and not enough the importance of the character. And I think that's probably where a lot of, a lot of transition falls flat. Because you can show so much more in film, and it, it really is such a slippery slope to try to maintain the dignity of the musical but also try to do something new mm -hmm. and yeah it's hard it's hard it's a difficult thing it is hard. but I, I, I don't agree. I, I'm still here for people you know trying <laughs> yeah and then I don't I mean hmm, I don't know and then like La, like you have like La La Land which was kind of a, a movie musical that's something That's different. True. And that at least kind of, that made that me was, believe a little bit more. It made me believe world. a little bit more. Uh, yeah. Uh, and especially because you did have the first sequence where the whole world is singing. I think that's where it also falls flat. If you're going to do a musical, you're going to have to put those ensembles. Because we have to believe that the whole world sings. Mm -hmm. Like, take And that's what page, I think La La Land. Take a page out of the Muppets. Yes. Because you know what? They do it every time. Exactly. Every movie they sing, and I believe it exactly. every time, coming every, out of the yes. mouths of puppets. So exactly. take a page out of the Muppets because and it's just true. make every movie musical a Muppet yes. movie. a Muppet movie. Because it's true, because in that La La Land, because they started it on the freeway, 
and the whole world is in the whole city at least is dancing and singing and then you're like okay this is normal this is what this their is world reality. is this yeah. is reality um rather than greatest showman when no one else is singing outside of the circus mm -hmm. you didn't have this you know no one else is singing so it's like okay what's going on like are you guys just randomly singing or uh well yeah. and it felt like the whole storyline was basically like the circus trying to show everyone that they're different and they're proud of it that was the whole arc well, that gets into, not to make this a crappy long episode, but um, that gets into this new thing of pushing. I get we want to make statements. Mm. I am a big proponent when I'm writing about saying a message. Huge. But there's a way to present the message where it doesn't choke people. It doesn't push so hard that it's, it's, uh, it, 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 and I, and that's honestly what I didn't like about the prom. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I get that this is the message we want to send, that she should be, you know, just as accepted, just as important, just as celebrated as all the other kids. But to me, when you're pushing it so hard, it loses its, it loses its importance. It loses its importance. Yes. It loses, yeah. it, it, it loses the, 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 to me, the true meaning. Cause now I'm, I, I couldn't see past. I don't know, like, like with the prom, I didn't know what this show was about other than the gay girl. I'm like, okay, it's a gay girl. I mean, what, who else is she? Because they were so, they were pushing that point so hard that they lost her and her point. Can you um, imagine for a second if Greatest Showman, say it was like almost the exact same thing, but instead of this is me coming where it does, what if throughout the entire arc of the show... He's trying to put this group together and he starts kind of falling into this mentality of treating them like misfits and to the point where he has a breaking point in front of them uh, and they are the ones kind of not standing up to him per se but they're the ones first making the statement to him of, wait, I'm not going to apologize for who I am, sir. Right. You started this trying to make me believe something and I believe it. And now you don't believe it. And can you imagine if this is me came at the end of the show? I was about to was say, you know who it, that would have been as you were talking, you know, who came into my mind that I would actually would love to see it if it was her singing it at the end, because to me, she was one of the ones that had the most arc. Mm -hmm. um, which was Zendaya. Zendaya's character had one of the most arcs because you realize, okay, she's black. You know, she's she had all these embarrassing moments. There's this white kid who likes her, but then he's even giving her embarrassing moments. You know, she goes through this whole thing, and then he finally, you know, accept, they, they get this moment in the fire, and blah, blah, blah. But um, I think even coming from her, like, like, especially whenever all the people were, and I don't know, maybe because I'm black, but when all the people were, like, you know, giving her looks and stuff, if she would have saying, this is me, yeah. um, maybe, because, I mean, like you said, I didn't really know the bearded lady other than she's bearded yeah. and weird looking. Or if it started as, like, a trickle version where it started with the bearded lady say, saying that to him, so then it inspires her yes. to kind of go out into the world and Yes, and then she that. says, you know this I mean? is me, yeah, and I'm not ashamed of who I am. And if you don't want to date me, white boy, then don't date me because I am Can we get Hollywood sexy. on the phone? Can we just, get Hollywood? We, we just fixed it. Problems. We just fixed, we it. fixed it. We fixed things. We fixed, we fixed the problems. Um, Nailed it. So, yeah, I guess all in all, to, to wrap this up, movies to musicals and music musicals to movies is a thing. And it's probably not going anywhere. Nope. But... There has to be a way where, number one, they are less commercial on both yeah. ends and give room for the original creator. Maybe don't have so many in a year. Yeah. Stop trying Maybe to don't have everyone. so many. Kick yes. a hole through a wall and say what you want to say. Yes. 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 That's my, at least, at least when it comes to musicals to movies, when it comes to movies to musicals just uh look around see if there's any other things that maybe you could throw some money at there anything else to write maybe any other ideas out there nothing okay well, well let's bring in the movie musical let's listen to that you there's know surely just something there's too open, many people on this earth 
open your mind. That's all I will say. Yes. And we it's love a good movie musical mind. or musical movie turned musical. We love it. But also, like, let's also make sure we consider other creations. I actually don't know what kind of movie and musical I actually like. Um, yeah, so I don't actually think I like that many movies to musicals. The only well, one that I really wait. can say that I like is Lion King. Hang on. I came and up that, with a bunch. And I'll tell you the reason why I like Lion King is because it gave Mary an Poppins. all black... <laughs> that doesn't count. I'm going to try not to pick... Um, Disney things. Hang on. Okay. But hold on. Let me tell you why I like Sister Lion Act. King. <laughs> the reason why I like Lion King is because uh, it's one of the ones that gave, uh, uh, in the early days, an all-black cast options. Yes. And they but did it in such a creative and way. And they did it in such a creative costuming. way that was completely different. So it wasn't different. just like, like animal costumes Exactly. On stage. So that's why I like Lion King, but I don't like Sister Act. Nope. I don't like, what did you else name? I don't think there's really many I like. Movie first. Oh, The Producers. Okay. The Producers is an awesome it is musical. Yeah, it, yeah. That is one that, again, they went a little different. Yeah. They kept the elements and they kept some of the jokes and stuff like that. But they just made it like 10 times bigger. That was good. And then what's funny is it went from movie to musical back to movie. <laughs> Did you, and yes, it's it still, did. I mean, I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. I do. Yeah, that one. Was, that one was Hairspray. Good. Hairspray went from movie to musical, technically. But it wasn't a movie musical. So there was no yeah. music in the movie. Mm-hmm. It was just a movie. And then they brought it to the stage and made it a musical. That was good. That's true. That one was good. Yeah, that one. I feel like I'm crushing it right now. Those were yeah, two I, there's, good ones. There's a lot more than the other opposite end. Because like you mentioned That's Cabaret. True. I love that one. There's a lot of You're Chicago. Right. Just sound of music. <gasps> Color like, Purple. Oh, so good. I do like it, but then I don't. The revival was much better than the original production. Sorry, but it was. Okay. Oh, it was Maybe so good. Maybe that's why. Because oh. I mean, I... Because I, then again, Color Purple is another one where I'm like, did that have to be a musical? Did it it have didn't to have be? to be a musical, but that was a oh, that was a rent. musical that went to movie and then back to a musical. Or wait, wait, musical. So Rent Rent started as a musical, went to a movie, and then went from no, yeah, musical to movie, which was oh. fine. The movie was fine. You know what I hated? I'll tell you the nitpicky thing I hated about the movie. They CGI'd their breath to make it look like it was winter time, and every time they did it, I was like, stop it. <laughs> Stop it's it. New York City. Who cares? Right? Who cares if you can see their breath? But yeah, I think yeah. you're right. I think it's it's less so that something starts as a movie and turns to a musical that is really that I that yeah great. for me personally that I actually am like yes I can 100 get that I love. I mean, to me it's not that way. I like I am definitely more of the original theater. Well, yeah. I mean, original writers and theater. I champion and I love those ones a lot more than. Movies made to musicals. Yeah, I, think I mean, I'm s- I'm still here for some Beetlejuice. It was fantastic. We're gonna. Have I to do like. I did. I gotta see Beetlejuice. See I I gotta listen to the whole soundtrack too because I only heard one song, and I loved it. It was something about how humans are, how people are, something about that. Oh, I can't so think good. of it right now. So good. But I li- I did like that one. But yeah, but there's a like I said, there's a lot less on that end. So, oh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, that is our discussion for this episode um definitely let us know what you think about musicals to movies movies to musicals in the comment section um we love to talk and respond to you guys uh and hear you out even if you disagree with us even if you 100 percent were like no it's not enough i want more then go ahead and talk about it hon like, go ahead and like and subscribe ring the bell go on to our patreon patreon backslash one hen Help us out. Get some cool merch. Get some uh, shout outs even. Shout outs. Shout out. Shout out. Like and subscribe the podcast. Give us some stars. Send it to your friends. Listen to us on a long car ride. Ooh, do that. Go through our whole entire season. Go through the whole season. They're fun. They're funny. Get to know us. (laughs) Yes, so we love you all. Thank you so much for hearing our opinionated amazingness. Yes. 
And we will see you next week. We'll see you next Bye. week. Bye.